do 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 Hey, welcome everybody to day two of OER by Domains 21. Yesterday was so exciting, folks, that I was just saying in the co-chairs opener, I hardly slept last night because my adrenaline was like still up here and I couldn't pull myself down. So it's great to start off with you guys. So welcome, big welcome everyone, um, to Jane, to Ahmed, to Karnan, and um, and to Hassan from the City University. And you're here to talk about what's really a professional development module, isn't it? And a, and a way of practicing. So Ahmed and Kanan here are lecturers I, I, at the university. Hassan is from the uni, uh, university library team. And with Jane, they're gonna talk about their experiences of this. It just sounds really exciting. And it also, one of the things I'm loving from the abstract folks is, it sounds really replicable. So I think a lot of people are going to be able to go away with some sort of practical sense of, of how to work. But hey, enough from me. Over to you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Lou. Good morning, everybody. So, yeah, I'm Jane Secker at City University and delighted to be joined by my um, colleagues who are going to share some of their experiences of um, being on my module. Um, so just uh, quickly going to talk a bit about the module um, and some stu student feedback or some participant feedback. And if I've got time, I've been doing some research, which um, sort of got a little bit scuppered by the pandemic, but um, where I was interviewing staff about um, their experiences of open practice digital literacies. If we have got a moment as well, I would really like to hear from um, people about um, your thoughts about supporting um, digital literacies and open practice through formal kind of accredited modules. So, um, I um, started this module actually um, three years ago in October um, 2018. It's really a reflection of my um, interest in digital literacies and open practice. And I guess at the heart of that is um, my interest also in, in copyright, um, although that's not explicit in the module title. Um, I've had three cohorts go through the module, one which was fully online, um, which is what um, the people that are joining you were, were part of. Um, and it was informed by um, a module that ran at the university or that does run at the University of Manchester and also some experiences I had um, out in Uruguay in 2018 where I taught a module called Copyright Literacy and Open Practices to staff at the university there. Um, there's a course blog as well, so you can find out um, more about the module um, on the course blog. This is just very briefly a bit about the structure. I have talked about um, this a few times. Um, there are three sort of teaching days. We then have open webinars. So those, they're all recorded. They're all, you're able to join if you're not on the module. Um, and um, I have some amazing guest speakers, um, some of whom um, are here today, I think. Um, and then the module has two um, assessments. Um, you have to make a video and do a 500 word reflection on an aspect of either digital literacy or open practices and then write a reflective essay. Um, so yeah, the webinars, as I say, have been an absolutely fantastic part of the, um, the, the module and I've had really good feedback as well from people on the, the course and from outside. And um, as I say, many of the people will be familiar to you um, who have spoken at those webinars and real kind of experts um, from around our community who can talk about uh, their particular interests in, in digital literacy um, and in, in copyright and in um, open practice. So I'm very um, um, pleased to have that as part of the module, but something that's available to everyone. Um, the other kind of really key thing in the module is the game that I um, co-created with Chris, Chris Morrison. Um, we had some interesting experiences of shifting this game, the publishing trap online. So we all, always play this game on the third day of the module because it kind of brings together lots of aspects of openness. Um, and it's a, a role play game. It's a it was a board game, but we've shifted that online. So you can find out um, a bit more about that um, on our website that I've just popped the link to there. Um, but it, I think playfulness as well is really important when you're talking about kind of, you know, these issues of digital literacy, open practice. And I really hope that on that last day that, that people do go away 
um, you know, with with a sense that, yes, there are some really big, serious issues associated with open education. Um, but, you know, also um, it is about um, dealing with those and, and, and also kind of um, sharing our experiences and, and, and using games and play. So um, at this point, I would love to hand over to each of my um, three uh, students in turn. Um, I've just put some details about each of them on the screen. Um, and I think we're going to hear a bit from um, from Karnan first. He's a visiting lecturer um, on the undergraduate program at our business school at City and also um, it does uh, works as a sort of uh, a freelance um, entrepreneur and all sorts of exciting things you do, Karnan. So I, I hear from you first, Karnan, with perhaps some reflections. Thank you, Jane. Um, so Jane just asked me to say a few words about my thoughts on the module. And first off, can I say I, I see Catherine's here. Uh, there may be some other uh, visiting uh, webinar uh, uh, participants as well and I just want to say that was a fabulous part of the, the module and it's a good job it was online because otherwise I would have spent all day and never let them go because the discussions that were generated from from those webinars were so interesting um, especially for me because as Jane knows I'm a complete technophobe I'm a Luddite I don't do technology so I, I challenged myself to take the technology um, modules on the on the uh, MA that I'm, I'm learning about because I thought it was it was useful and it's it's the way technology is going forward um, and from being uh, completely not knowing anything at all about uh, technology and the use of it in in academia having followed Jane through two modules now I did um, technology enhanced academic practice prior to this uh, I, I feel so much more um, empowered in the use of technology uh, to aid my teaching uh, and, and how we can actually engage with it so much better for the benefit of uh, the lecturers as well as the students. So I think it, for me, it's been a fabulous uh, course. I'm, I'm really interested um, in the use of technology to widen the scope of the availability of education through the world. So, you know, if you're a child stuck in a very small remote village in the wilds of nowhere and you're nowhere near a school, um, how can we actually help those children to get an education, to benefit, to improve their lives. And I know that all sounds very world PC, but that really is the core of, I think education is so important to give everybody a fair chance at getting on in life. And the way that technology can be used to help that, I think is just fabulous. And learning that through this, this module um, has, has really underpinned what I want to do to continue um, to, to bring to try and make that happen uh, as much as I can. So um, that's me. It's been a great module. It's been really interactive, um, great speakers uh, and a great tutor. So thank you, Jane. Thank you, Karnan. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Hassan, would you like to speak next? And, and Hassan's actually uh, uh, one of the um, library school students. So this module is an elective if you're on our LIS program at City. So Hassan. Um, Hi, uh, education has always been an important factor in my life ever since I learned to read. Uh, for me, the module facilitated a merger between my love of technology and my passion for educational advancement. As a student, it allowed me to rethink the way I worked, enriching the process of research for my modules and further readings. And as a professional, it equipped me with the knowledge to reevaluate how information is disseminated, especially for the BAME patrons that are a large portion of the users at the library where I work. It reminded me that someone who grew up on technology that I might take for granted how a library catalog can be used and made me a better professional by allowing me to consider and adapt my library's catalog for use for many uh, digital immigrants. Thank you, Hassan. Thank you. That's, that's excellent and really great to have you part of the uh, programme. Um, Ahmed, would you like me to speak for you or are you, how are you feeling? Are you? Well, well I, I try, okay. Go for it. Go for it. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Uh, okay, so um, basically, I I don't need I do not need a book to tell me that the education environment uh, is changing, uh, but I need a process to lead me into this change. And I found this is the this much well Jane much well really helping. For example, before studying this much well uh, EDM one to two. I used to spend hours designing learning material and teaching material. I used to write C, which is a copyright, so no other teacher used my material. 
missing the wisdom of sharing and adding a new idea. I was not alone. I found this lots of teachers actually they do not share. I'm talking about open education resources. So we form a group of people, uh, of a group of teachers, and we explain the wisdom of sharing the open education resources. And from there, there is no go back. You know? So we're sharing our materials, we're practicing, we're adding a new idea, and so on. So this much will really help me and help others to come and see the wisdom of uh, sharing and practicing open education resources. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank you, Khan, and thank you, Hassan. It's really um, lovely to have you join me. And, um, uh, you know, I, I hope we get time um, for people to ask you a few questions as well. I can see some lovely comments coming up in the chat as well. Um, I um, just want to say a little bit about the wider impact of the module. So, um, as I mentioned, there's a course blog, and actually, um, in some ways, um, the stats on the blog, I don't think really are that particularly in, enlightening. I mean, there, there is sort of the webinars are actually the thing that people go to to have a look at. It's it's I'd really like to get sort of more people engaged with the module and share more information about it. So um, but I was really delighted two years ago, um, just after I'd run the module for the first year to do a session with um, with Lorna and Chris and, and Dave White um, to talk about the impact that the module had had on them as webinar speakers um, and they're people that have continued to be involved in it and shared some really valuable reflections about the benefit that it's had for them as well so um, I, I, I kind of want to I want to carry on really on this journey particularly after hearing from my students it's yeah it's just wonderful um, I have been doing some research um, in this area. Um, it, as I say, it was it was actually started before the pandemic, and um, I'm really hoping I can pick up and do some more interviews. Um, I did six semi-structured interviews um, in the summer of uh, 2019, and I actually presented um, just a couple of weeks before the lockdown at the INTED conference um, out in Valencia. And um, there is a paper, an open access paper, if you want to read more about the findings from that um, using phenomenography and looking at staff motivations to get involved in the module um, and the sort of challenges as well um, I, I guess there isn't time to go into too much of the findings for this um, but these were sort of the key areas I was looking at in the research what motivated people to be open um, it challenges and issues around understanding all the different terminology um, in the module there for a 15 credit module there's there's quite a lot to get your head around and one of the things I wanted people to do was to be able to choose you know, they don't have to learn it all. If they're more interested in open practice, that's where they could go and explore. If they're more interested in aspects of digital literacy, that's what they could explore. Um, but I think confidence around digital literacy was something um, that I was really, really interested in how, and, and Conan, you said some really valuable things there about how the module might have helped you to, specifically around developing your confidence. And I know you've gone on then to support your colleagues. Um, I'm just going to say something briefly about um, motivations um, and barriers to openness. Um, I think this idea of building a community of practice was something that came out of my research and just from my experience of being on the module. And um, I, I really do think that there are some um, issues with whether senior managers are engaged with openness. Um, and, you know, a lot of this feels to me like it's a very bottom up. Um, approach that's coming from teachers. Um, there are that does sort of lead us to what some of the concerns are. Concerns about copyright, as Ahmed was saying. You know, prior to that, he was very much quite protective of his resources, and he's actually created um, a community of language teachers now who are understanding more about openness and understanding copyright issues. Um, but there are, you know, some still concerns out there, and I think there are definitely disciplinary differences. Um, finally, I guess the, the role that training and support and kind of a formal accredited module plays is, is I think it's just one part of the picture that of what we offered at City um, since the since, you know, prior to the pandemic, but particularly um, in the last year. And our learning technology team provide a, a, a huge um, mm -hmm. amount of support. And, and, you know, I think that 
their contribution is invaluable. They say the modules are one small part, but also I think peers and colleagues um, who take modules, who go on um, different workshops, then can go on and provide this really valuable layer of peer support as well. And the peer mentoring that I see after people come on my module, um, and you can hear, um, uh, you heard some some about that, is really um important because I think what people want is they want the support um, in their own discipline and from their own context and we're all obviously time poor so that's a real challenge. So I know that the modules impact is small but I do feel it's significant and I think it's growing and I do think that since the pandemic staff have been more receptive of and aware of the need for open practices um, but I know there is still huge variation in experience and I want to kind of go on and find, find out more about that. Um, but I do think that we have seen um, a, a greater incentive. I think what we need to do is work out how we can tackle that with our senior managers and our leaders so that they understand open practice. Um, and that's certainly something um, I've been thinking about quite a lot um, at City. So <clears throat> that's it, over to you. If anyone has any um, experiences that you'd like to share, at this point um then that would be great but i just also um i do want to sort of say a big thank you to everybody who participated in my research um and also to my students today coming along and special thanks also to chris who i uh, have uh, listed here as my ever critical friend but any any time for questions if we've got any or oh, i don't know how we're doing for time we, we're doing good. We've got four minutes left and, and we can get through a lot in four minutes. That was fabulous. And that sense of where you are now as a moment in time, showing us all that's gone to build up to that, the impact it's had and the thinking about going forward. I, I love that. I love seeing a slap snapshot of, you know, a journey there. Um, here is, I think it's Teresa saying that lots of language teachers do see the advantages of sharing and understanding Ownership is part of an existential challenge, really. And, you know, something about um, uh, uh, continuing to support people to understand the language around open as well. And um, Catherine's saying that the senior management gap is absolutely real. Yeah. Uh, and I absolutely agree with you there, Catherine. It's great to see in this presentation inclusivity and social justice foregrounded as guiding principles. Yeah, absolutely. Have we got any questions, folks? You clapping hands. Ah, uh, Chris, here's Chris. Brilliant to be part of this module and seeing how participate. Yeah, I can see the question from Alex actually about how we engage senior management buy-in and whether the Edinburgh model is the way to go. I, I, I think it's. I think it, you. You know, having a policy is really important as well. And Chris and I have presented on this because, in some ways, we see what we've what what I've done at City and what he's done at Kent as being a bit of a contrast. Um, in that he's gone for a sort of policy, and Edinburgh obviously have the open education policy. Uh, it's it's something that would be really challenging and slow to um, to get to happen at City. And so um, I haven't. I haven't yet tackled that, but that I guess is my next sort of real challenge um, to do that. But I don't know if any, would Ahmed, Conan or Hassan, is there anything you'd like to share just in the last few minutes, anything? Um, I, I would just say that I have uh, become completely converted to the extent that I mentioned to Jane, I was asked to write a guest editorial for a, a professional body uh, newsletter, and I chose to write about digital literacy and the importance uh, of how all uh, management consultants absolutely need to embrace better digital literacy because that is the way the world is being shaped. So I, I think I have, you know, become uh, sort of evangelised. I think on the whole digital journey from having been a complete luddite about a year ago to being right at the forefront. And I, I think it, it's just so exciting. I think some of that support that is needed to to allow it to to be to have its importance that it merits within the higher education sphere. And I think that's it was part of the paper that I wrote. It's my final paper for the module. Uh, and I think it's something that I will certainly be chiseling away at in the leadership environment that I'm involved in to ensure that it we do see how much um, having that digital ability can help both staff and the students. And then overall, obviously, your institution and higher education at large. 
Yeah, brilliant. Thank you, Karen. And, and <clears throat> the comments are still coming in around, you know, around what's next and getting this sort of work mm -hmm. really embedded. Louise is asking any top tips about who to approach to create similar courses within institutions? Well, I think I'm, I'm fortunate in that I'm part of the educational development team. So I'm one of the academics um, that teaches our module here. And I, I think what we do need is to get more awareness amongst academic developers um, about, um, you know, the openness and and, um, and, and and digital literacies. And these types of modules, are, I think, are relatively rare. So I would be very happy to talk to anyone who wants to have a go at trying to take it forward and, and run a similar module um, at their own institution or look at how it could be embedded um, perhaps into, you know, I, I teach a module which I've just renamed, actually, it's now going to be di developing digital education. But I think it, it can easily fit within existing uh, modules it, you know I've just been fortunate enough to be able to have my own dedicated module for my interest but but I'm very happy to share any of the course um, you know the curriculum design all the, the 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 module specifications and things like that so please get in touch with me people um, if you yeah brilliant thanks everybody we're out of time that was a great start to day two thanks so much for coming along and sharing your experiences thank you thanks thank you everybody thanks thanks for my Bye. Thank you. thanks <laughs> oh, nom, nom.